Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose of Metalholic Magazine and Metal Nation Radio, and with us today, the Road Warriors themselves, Death Division, Jerry Montano with us. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for asking. We're, we're uh, out on tour, traveling across the country. Yeah, Omaha, Nebraska tonight. You know, last weekend I was in Boise, Idaho at the Shredder, and your stickers were like wallpapered everywhere. <laughs> Oh yeah, the shredder. Those guys. Those guys are really cool. We we love that place. Marking your territory as you go across the nation. Hey, oh yeah. All right. So, for those not familiar with Death Division yet, and I, I'm sure that's going to change here real shortly. But for those not familiar, give us a little backstory on how you put the whole thing together. I know you started this in like 2012 or something like that, but share with us sort of the path that of it coming together, if you will. It was it was pretty cool, man. Uh, I was out one night, you know, just kind of in, in Hollywood, and I ran into Sean Singer, and kind of ended up just we got together and just, we're going playing guitars and stuff, and everything just kind of came together. We ended up writing a couple of songs, like right when we first met, and then we got we actually sat down in a room, and a lot of it just came naturally. The next day, I put an ad up on uh, Facebook and. Tim Biondi hit me up, and he, he was an old friend of mine. We started jamming with him, and uh, before you know it, we were out on tour with Megadeth, and and just kind of hit the ground running, you know, recording and working, and so it's it's it's, it's come together pretty naturally, which is cool. When you guys got together and started doing all that, did you guys have like a collective vision in mind of what you wanted the band to sound like, or just a basic idea that evolved as you began writing and playing together? I think the thing that I wanted the most out of Death Division was. I wanted to be able to do anything. I, I knew that we wanted to be able to do heavy music, melodic stuff, and if we wanted to do some like acoustic, vibey, you know, you know, get into some more moody or even muse type heavy type stuff that we could, you know. So we really wanted to leave all the windows and doors open, you know, for growth and, and for other things to happen down the road, which is something that we laid the groundwork for early on with Death Division. Right, and you guys put together your first EP yourselves, We Are the Fallen, and that got you guys quite a bit of notoriety, at least within the industry. I mean, you got picked up for Gigantor uh, for, from Megadeth, and, and then, of course, Kurt yeah. Hammett got involved with the, uh, the Fear Festival thing. Yeah, it was really cool. The, the first one we, uh, we recorded in my bedroom, actually, which is kind of cool. My buddy at the time, Matt Starr, who was, who was playing drums for Ace Frehley, you know, he just, we got a, we got a bunch of gear together. We set it up in my living room and called another buddy of mine, uh, who was a drum check for, uh, Matt Sorum and, and, uh, Jason Bonham. And we got some, some cool mic threes and just went for it, man. And we just did it in my house and it turned out really cool. You know, eventually Dave Mustaine got a hold of it with Justice Mustaine. And, you know, before we knew it, we were out on tour, you know, it's kind of happened. It's really cool. So let's look at the new EP, which comes out uh, on June 24th, Angels of the Black Dawn Part 1. Now, do you see that sonically anyway as a progression or an evolution from that debut EP? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, the first one was done it sonically, you know. It was, it was done in my bedroom. This one was done at East West, uh, you know, one of the biggest studios that's out there. and Mixed by our buddy Gus uh, Kranz, who does a lot of, you know, he's he's like a you know, young, hungry mixer, and you know, I put I put a lot of work into this one. We really worked hard on pre-production writing, trying to write the best songs that we could for it. Uh, everything just kind of came into place. Really happy with the way that it came out. You know, sonically and musically, this one, you know, it's a lot of growth in this on this one. You know, so it's we're we're really really excited about this one. Well, you guys had said you had poured everything into the new EP, but this was also sort of a very personal record for you, I believe. Tell us about that part of your journey, because you went through a hard time in your life, and you poured a lot of that into this, it sounds like. Yeah, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that came through, you know, and, you know, because Sean and I write lyrics together, we write all the melodies and stuff together. You know, and I just, I come to a point in my life, man, where, you know, I've been through so many different things, and... Had, you know, had a had a pretty gnarly battle with alcoholism, as a lot of people had known out there. From you know me being you know departing hell yeah back in the day, and and just being a wild, obnoxious, kind of selfish, drunken, alcoholic, you know, drug addict, loser, scumbag, you know, like for years, like a pirate, you know. And I just kind of got to a point in my life where you know I knew that you know I needed to uh, 
to find another way. I was unhappy with myself and unhappy with the way things were working out. And I found, uh, you know, through, you know, the miracle, I found, you know, uh, my way into his rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous and ended up kind of getting my shit together and, and spent a lot of time on myself, you know, as a, as a human being, as just working on just being a better person to people around me, to the people in my life. And, and I, I think that, you know, a lot of that came through in the record. And, you know, a lot of that, I, I feel that, you know, when you have good intentions, I felt that, the, you know, that the universe knows that and it kind of put us on our path. Uh, to where we are now and how things are working out. And it's been really cool, man. Since then, you know, I've gotten to, you know, work on a, starting a nonprofit organization to help other people get help, you know, who are struggling, you know, and, and it changed a lot of my view on things, you know what I mean? It's more about life's about, you know, what you can, helping other people, what you could do for other people, not about what you can take and what you can get. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, you don't know this about me, but by day, I'm a drug and alcohol counselor for the prison system here where I live. So I'm right. Yeah, that's cool. I'm right there with you. So now, so that had to be somewhat cathartic just making this EP for you then. It was, man. You know, the, the, whole, the whole journey was really cool. But I'll tell you what, you know, I knew that I was on the right path while we were, while we were working on it, when we were recording it, because every little thing that we set out to do, the door just opens, you know, it's just like, you know, when the universe knows you're on the right path, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you're cruising down the, you know, down the, down the street. And if you're, you know, if you're doing 35 miles an hour, you hit every green light exactly right when it turns green, you know, uh, you, you go, you know, 37 and you hit every red, you know what I mean? All, all the way down the fucking road, man. It's just the way that it is. And, uh, you know, we were just kind of like, you know, vibe and, you know, I, I I was kind of in my place, and, and it, every little thing that I set out to do it was like, you know, it was like, okay, we're going to go record the record. We have no money. Well, this person works at the studio, and they decided they're going to hook us up and donate us time. Well, we need somebody to do this. Well, this person happened to come across my path, and it, it just kind of worked that way across the board, you know? It was really cool. Well, let's talk about some of the music on the, on the EP, because you guys <laughs> released the first song, The Truth, which is a very powerful track. Give us the backstory on that one. The Truth is a song that we had written, you know, while we were, like, we were touring with, the, we were playing this, this song on the Giganto. We kind of, you know, started to rework it. When it came to that song, I think Sean had a definite, you know, vision and idea of where he was coming from with it. And then at the same time, you know, it was, was kind of like my, I always see things from a different point of view. So it, the cool thing is, is that when we write songs, He'll be writing it from one perspective, and I always write it from another, which is cool because, you know, with, a, with a, for instance, like the lyric video, I went from his perspective when I kind of wrote the treatment and the idea for the video, you know, which was kind of more of a literal sense to where on my end it came from my background in battle with addiction and, and kind of making it through some things. And you'll find that, I think, through, if you, if you, listen throughout the EP, you'll find a lot of that with the song Dead Heroes, for instance, was really kind of just, I just kind of wrote it to myself, about myself in a sense, you know, of, of where I was at my with my life and how I was unhappy with myself and how I was living, but, you know, type of situation. But the cool thing is, is, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. You can listen to it and, you know, and it could be to you something completely different, you know. Absolutely. I mean, when I first listened to The Truth, the first line that stuck out to me was about false prophets. And of course, right now I'm all caught up in this where we're at in America. I mean, we've got Trump and Clinton and Sanders running for president. And I'm like, what the hell is happening to this country? So that was the first thing I thought of, which may be completely different <laughs> yeah. from what you and Sean were thinking about. But. Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, to me, it was it was like, you know, these are the things you've been fighting for. It's like... For me at the time, I was like, this is the bullshit that you're fucking living for. Like, you know, what are you doing with your fucking life? It's like, so from my perspective, it was totally different. But I, I do, I do like your version. And, and from Sean's perspective, I think, you know, he had, he had some issues with organized religion as a child from it being pushed on him. You know, so in his sense, it was a little more literal to where mine wasn't, you know. Well, not, and when I watched the video, which I was going to ask you who did the treatment for it, and you, you said it was you, but 
It was brilliantly yeah. done. Part lyric video, part animation, part performance. Got a little bit of everything in there. And yeah, and I saw the whole thing with the with the minister in there and myself, I'm I'm an agnostic or an atheist. I'm not a believer and I, I have no problem with people who are or faith or anything like that, but I can't stand right. organized religion either because of what we right. focus on people. So it's all in there. It's just such a great track and a great video, and you guys did a fantastic job with all of it. Thank you so much. You know, with, with, with that one, I just kind of, as soon as when it was time to kind of do the, the video, you know, I, I, I kind of had an idea and a vibe, but I just started writing it down the way it worked out. I was like, cool. And the, the cool thing about the video you'll see later down the road is that the Death Division animated characters come back. There are other videos that are coming down the pipeway with the animated characters, so there's going to be more of them. Nice. So, if this were a full album, I wouldn't be able to ask you this, but we've already talked about two tracks on the album, The Truth and Dead Heroes. We've got three more on there. Do you mind giving us a quick sort of backstory on how you guys put them together, either musically or your your idea of it lyrically or something? Yeah, the other songs, uh, See You Never, was kind of like a song about, you know, the ex-girlfriend type vibe, you know? Somebody who's just kind of always there and pushing your buttons, you know, it's kind of, you know, everybody's got that vibe. It's a really fucking, it's a really cool song. We had rewritten that one, actually, right as we had just remixed the album. So we really stoked on that one. Right Away also was, like a, uh, was a song that we had written, and that kind of came from another, when I was in a, a position of extreme, you know, weakness. I mean, there was dark times in my life where, you know, I was like really really low and you know I had lost you know my dad and, and uh, my career was in the toilet and, you know hardcore alcoholism and Runaway is a song about you know the, the, the smile to your face knife to your back type of situation you know I, you know I was, I was battling the booze the bottle and, and the cocaine and, and the craziness and it was just kind of you know like like they said like we said in the song you know they they hate to love but they love to hate you that was the vibe of of runaway was you know that oh, the the life and the haters you know and then uh yeah the last song in loving memory we wrote that song i would say in about 15 minutes wow you know and it's yeah it just it just happened like shot it just kind of strung the chord or something and it just boom it was there i, I knew the second that we he had even played the chord. I was like, "There, what, what is that? There it is." And I pretty much wrote the lyrics in within minutes. You know, what I mean, I think we both, you know, the the big majority of it, it was really fast. Shot and I back, you know, kind of bounced back and forth, and it was done. And the loving memory was a song that was written. See, at the time, right before I started Death Division, my best friend was killed on his motorcycle. And he was a record producer, James Murray. He had done Papa Roach and Alien Ant Farm and Drowning Pool's first records. Right. And uh, he was like, he was a very close, dear, dear friend of mine, my confidant. And we were working together a lot. And he was coming to meet me one night out with my buddies, uh, the Southern Band from New York City Sex Slaves, and he never showed up. And the next morning, I got the phone call that he was that he was killed on his motorcycle. And it was just devastating. You know, I, I just, you know, I was going through like I said, just really dark, dark times. And anyway, what, as soon as I heard the notes of that song, it just hit me right away. And the song was written about James Murray, my best friend who was killed. And again, it could be taken in any way, in any context, but that kind of like my gift to him. You know what I mean? And, and other people that we had lost throughout the years, you know, like how we had written Thank You from Hell Yeah for, for Dime, but it really, you know, it, it worked for all different kinds of people. I was just kind of you know, in loving memory, I felt like was a gift given to us from the universe. We gave it right back. So, nice. something I'm really, really proud of. Bridging the gap. Uh, obviously, it's an important thing to you. It's an important thing for me for what I do. Tell us, those who don't know, about the Bridging the Gap Recovery thing. Bridging the Gap Recovery is a nonprofit organization that I come together. It started by my old singer, it's Duke Collins. Uh, who had passed away last year, unfortunately, from a heroin overdose. Duke was a very dear friend of mine, and we had done the deadlights together. We were assigned to a lecture. We toured, you know, toured around, did the offsets and all that. We still stayed close all these years, and he had a long battle with heroin addiction, and eventually it took his life. During his battle, you know, we, we were still always close. 
So I was always trying to, you know, I, we were, you know, going with him in and out of treatment or hospitals trying to help him. And a lot of times he would be like, man, you know, how am I supposed to go to rehab if I, I'm going to lose everything I have, Jerry? You know, like, I don't, who's going to pay my bills if I go to rehab? You know, so after he passed away, I had talked to his mother and I was like, well, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for us to do something good for some other people. And so Bridging the Gap came together. What it is is we're going to uh, help people that are going into treatment. So, you know, somebody who's going to go into treatment isn't going to lose their house. You know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna come home to, uh, you know, we're gonna keep the lights on, we're gonna keep, keep the bills paid while they go in to get the things done that they need to, to do to, uh, to better their lives, you know. And, and so that's how, that's what Bridging the Gap is and how it came to be. It's something that's very dear to all of us. It's been really cool. We had the very first, uh, show where we had a Deadlights reunion where Sean from, from Death Division fronted the Deadlights and the guys in the band. Uh, the deadlights we hadn't played together in 16 years or even seen each other. So that was pretty cool. We did that. My buddies from Revenge Sevenfold, uh, Matt, said, Matt Shadows and, and, uh, Sinister and the guys, they donated an autographed guitar for us, which we're, uh, auctioning off over for Bridging the Gap to help get our first, our first person through treatment here for, in the next month or so. And, uh, my buddies Dave, Dave Draymond and Disturbed sent a bunch of drum heads and, Fans have been helping. It's been really cool. So it's all about helping someone, you know. Uh, and it's a fantastic and awesome cause. We have we have hurt so many people in this country with the war on drugs instead of using the money we're wasting on that to help get people into treatment and get their lives back. So it's a fantastic thing you're doing. And for those who are listening, you can go over to the Death Division Facebook page. There's a video on there from Jerry talking about the uh, Avenged Sevenfold guitar and how you can get involved in all of this stuff and bridging the gap. All right. So before we get out of here, just for fun, right now Metal Holic is doing its best of 2016 so far albums. Is there a metal album this year that sort of really hit home for you that you're really digging? Yeah, it's hard for me because I, I I'm, I'm like I'm a workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like you guys are metalholics. So I'm I'm the workaholic. I'm the one you know that's always like you know I'm, I'm always ten steps ahead with Death Division constantly, but. I really do, I really dig the new Gojira stuff. That band just, you know, they never fail when it comes to, you know, I'm, I'm always into Gojira. So I would say that that would be the one that I'm listening to the most right now. Nice, the new Gojira. All right, Jerry Montano, Death Division, out on the road now. The new EP, Angels of Black Dawn, part one, coming out on June 24th. The new single, The Truth, is already out there. Go check the video out. Jerry, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with us. Hey, thank you for having me. It really means a lot, and you know, to even uh, you know, spread the word on Death Division and Bridging the Gap. It's both are very dear to my heart, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you guys so much, man. I really, really, really appreciate it.